that we have the bearings pushed onto the carrier group and the carrier group is completely assembled and torqued, uh, we're going to start reassembling this gear section. Uh, something that you always need to do, obviously, on any kind of uh, disassembly and assembly is you want to inspect for main surfaces, any debris, any damage. Um, this case looks pretty good. Um, like I said, it was assembled already. Um, the bearing areas look pretty good. The threads look pretty good. Uh, we'll go through and clean those a little bit, too. There is one area right here that I want to pay attention to. Uh, there is a little bit of, it uh, looks like maybe old paint. Um, there's a couple of dings on it. And that is simple as coming in with a pretty fine tooth file. Um, I, I try to stay away, uh, try not to recommend any kind of uh, abrasive as far as sandpaper or emery cloth. Um, we do want to protect any bearing that may be done in there. And we're not trying to take any material off, but we are just going to come in with a flat file and do a little bit of cleanup. And any anything that may have been there will get uh, filed off. We did have a couple high spots. You can see I didn't spend a whole lot of time. We did have some damage, uh, but we do have some high spots that we removed. There was a high spot there. There's a little bit of damage there, uh, and the paint and stuff that was there is now removed. And it may be on the outside. It may not interfere with the pinion group, but it could. So we do want to take sure uh, take take uh, care that, that that does get removed. A little bit of cleanup. When we turn it over, I'll do a quick inspection. Again, on the threaded area, that looks pretty good. Uh, I like to take a brush and brush them out just to make sure there's uh, nothing living in there that I didn't see. Uh, same thing for the carrier caps. Um, you always want to brush away from the part. You know, there's no sense in, in brushing the uh, dirt and debris down into the part. That one looks really good. Same thing there. If there is any damage, um, you can come in with a little bit of a round file and, and file it out. Um, again, you know, make sure you clean any kind of debris off of it. Uh, make sure there's nothing packed into the holes. Uh, this is a threaded hole. Uh, this, if you don't have this lock on here, you can actually ring the whole part because it does uh, have to lock the spanner. The spanners themselves, again, it's a thread. Uh, everyone knows if there's a damaged thread uh, that it doesn't want to move. This is pretty essential because this is how you set your preload for your carrier and it is also how you set the backlash on the assembly. So you want these fairly free. Uh, these look really good. I don't see anything there that's an issue. If I did, I would come in, there's a, there's, a, there's a slight nick right there. You come into the file and turn it to 45 degrees and just brush the damage away. And once you do that, obviously you want to clean it off again. <clears throat> if they are fairly rusty, uh, sometimes you'll get stuff out of the junkyard. You do want to take time and degrease it, sandblast it, uh, do whatever's necessary to make sure that those parts are, are clean and can rotate freely against each other. Um, next thing we're going to do is set the spanners in. Um, you want to set the spanners in uh, for the sole purpose. If you set the carrier in with the bearings or the races uh, with, the, with the bearing, when you set it down, a lot of times these bearings will just pop out. They are tapered. So we like to cage them in. One little trick that we do is we throw a race in and we use it as a guide to make sure that we're not cross threading. If you intentionally spread them a little bit further, it'll give you a little bit of room to drop your carrier group down in there. It's really awkward whenever you're trying to drop a carrier group down in something that's too close. Whenever you go to drop your carrier group in, what I like to do is grab the entire thing pick it up and I'll make sure that the races are with the part. I'll hang on to them with my pinky and my finger Then I'll set the entire thing down in there. And you do have control. I don't like to drop anything. If I drop it bounces, the bearings can fall out. And then you want to do a quick check to make sure everything is lined up. And then we will install the caps and torque everything down. A lot of the tools that we use in the shop here are purpose built. Um, it's as simple as I could not find a spanner, adjustable spanner wrench that I liked. Uh, so we made one. Uh, 24 inch bar, a couple bolts welded onto it. Uh, there's two different sizes that the stock Ford's used uh, and that's what we built it for. Uh, I built that really quick to do one third member about seven years ago and it's, it's held up so we keep using it. 
You do not want to tighten these down so tight that you have preload on your carrier uh, because you do not have your carrier caps off or on yet. Whenever you do torque them down, you may have uh, interference when you're trying to put your carrier cap on. So I do leave them a little bit loose, hand loose. I'm going to apply a little bit of oil to the threads. Rotate it around, make sure everything gets oiled. And then install your carrier caps. One of the tricks I like to do, uh, some cases are actually dowel pinned. If they are not, I install the bolts. And use them as alignment pins to drop your carry caps on. Now you do want to ensure that where you marked them earlier that you're putting the carrier cap in the correct position. The same thing to this side. Rubber mallet, give a little seat. Again, I don't torque anything down, obviously, with a torque wrench, that's what, or an impact wrench, that's what torque wrenches are for. What was the torquing on that again, Roy? On this one, um, this is actually a little bit bigger bolt than what a stock case is. Um, this is a 5 8 bolt, usually it's a half inch. Um, the, stock, uh, the stock torque is uh, 80 foot pounds and I generally go, uh, I'll set these at 80 and then I'll go to 95 on these 5 8 Now this should spin freely because there's no preload on these bearings. Uh, and preload is, is pressure applied to the bearing uh, before it's ever used. Uh, if bearings are free spinning, they have play in them, uh, they'll wear and they'll fail prematurely. Um, preload is just a, a, a slight amount of pressure on the bearing uh, so that it is uh, free of in play um, and it'll work correctly. For the Ford 9 inch, um, brand new bearings, 15 to 25 inch pounds. Uh, inch pounds is fairly slight. Um, some people will do it by hand. Uh, we always prefer to uh, use a torque wrench. All right, once you get your caps on and torqued, uh, you need to adjust your, your spanners to take up um, any kind of slop that's in the assembly, and you'll set your preload. Uh, then after that, we'll install the pinion, uh, and then we will set our backlash. Um, now, when you're setting your, your preload, um, what I like to do is I, I dial the spanner in and I give myself a reference point. Uh, I generally like to take one of these holes and line it directly at 12 o'clock. Uh, it gives me a place to start from and it gives me a reference point. And just so I don't lose that, as a reference, I'll come in and I'll mark the spanner and I'll mark the case in the same spot. And you'll see what that's for later. Uh, it's almost like a timing mark. Those two marks, wherever I am, whenever I set my, my backlash, those two marks should be lined up with each other as long as the preload is correct. I jumped the gun a little bit there. I should have checked the preload before I marked it. But I can take that off if I need to. Uh, we use a indicating inch-pounds dial torque wrench. Uh, I don't necessarily have to watch it whenever I set the torque. I can set the torque and then look at the orange line to see where I was. Uh, as far as the tools that we use, again, homemade tools. It's an axle stub uh, with a quarter inch drive socket on it. We'll install it. Put your torque wrench in. You'll have to reset it. Uh, inch pounds torque wrenches are very uh, sensitive. Without bumping it to start, take a reading and 
we are right at 16 inch pounds. Again, 15 to 25 inch pounds is good. Uh, we're a little bit on the low side, but we are in the range of usability, so we're going to go ahead and use that. So, my lines are good. Um, depending on how the pinion goes in, uh, if you're using a, a lower range gear, again, if you're in the you know, fives, the six, the sevens, you will almost always have to take this gear, unscrew some of the preload, and move the gear out of the way that, so that you can put the pinion in. Uh, this is a higher, a higher ratio gear. Uh, it should slip in. If it doesn't, uh, it doesn't. If it does, great. Uh, but we're going to leave it as it is, flip it over. We're going to reinstall the original pinion depth shim. Give that a quick wipe. Now, while we're checking this, I'm going to leave the O-ring off. Uh, the O-ring, you know, it does have an interference fit for sealing. Uh, for ease of setup, we're going to leave that off of there. That did sit down in there. It's awful tight though, so I know I'm going to have to back my, my gear off slightly. During the setup portion of this, <clears throat> I'm only going to use three bolts. Uh, you don't need all five whenever you're just checking. And then whenever, whenever we do final assembly, we'll put all five in. Again, lowest setting on my impact wrench. You're not trying to torque anything down now. Just a quick seat. That is locked up, there's no backlash, so I do need to back off of it a little bit. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll back off uh, an even number, you know, I'll, I'll go a half a turn. That's going to be way too much, but it's going to be a reference point. Whenever you unscrew one side, you have to screw the other side in. Again, that keeps your preload correct. So now both of my marks are at 6 o'clock. And I have some backlash. Backlash is the space between the two gears. On this one, we are going to shoot for about 11 thousandths, 12 thousandths backlash. So, I like to zero it out. Take it, rock it back and forth, and we are sitting at about 18. From here, we'll make an adjustment. Uh, we are too far apart right now. Uh, we will slightly unscrew this one, screw this one back in the same amount, and it'll move the ring gear towards the pinion gear until we get to our 11 and 12 thousandths that we want. I'm gonna go about two holes. Uh, rule of thumb on the nine inch stuff, uh, from hole to hole on your spanner, Related to backlash, it's usually about four thousandths, depending on the ratio. Uh, if you want to frame a reference of what you're looking for, if you check backlash and there's fifty thousandths backlash, you have a lot of movement to do before you're going to get to where you need to be. All right, we've adjusted the backlash between the two gears. Uh, it's set right at twelve thousandths right now. Uh, we're pretty happy with that. That's a good place to start. Uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to pattern the gear. Uh, this already has a lot of marking compound already on it from uh, when it was previously set up. Again, this one had been set up but never used. Um, fortunately, my marking compound is yellow, so I'm able to smear it right on top of this and read my pattern versus the existing pattern. If, uh, if that wasn't the case, what we'd have to do is we would have cleaned the gear completely. Uh, this stuff dissolves in oil. It's an oil-based paint. Um, it, it doesn't hurt anything to have it on there. Uh, we will go ahead and smear some contrasting color on there. What I like to do is uh, some people mark it in three places, some two, some all the way around. Um, the first mark that I look at, I'll mark about five teeth, look at it, see if I need to do adjustment. If I need to do an adjustment, um, I will do my adjustment, then I'll mark it 180 degrees out, and I'll check both of them. 
you don't have to use a lot of marking compound. It's uh, it spreads pretty easy. Uh, it spreads to your hands. It spreads to your clothes. It spreads to your bench. Uh, spreads to your vehicle. So I try to use as little as possible. Um, yellow against the dark gear stands out pretty easy. So I don't use a ton of it. Once I get the compound on there, uh, my trick, it's not really a trick, it's pretty obvious. Um, I rotate the gear so that I can provide a little bit of pressure with my hand, a little bit of preload pressure. <clears throat> I hang on to that and then I rotate the, the gear. I, I, tend to, I tend to rotate the gear itself about five times in both directions. All right, now I have this rotated. <clears throat> And this is where you can look at the instructions that come with the gear. They, they'll generally give you a chart to kind of go by. Um, with experience, you'll learn uh, what's acceptable, what's not acceptable. <clears throat> different gear manufacturers look differently than others. Different ratios will look differently than others. The, the guideline that you want to go by this is the drive side, this is the coast side. <clears throat> the drive side pattern should be a fuller pattern and it should be fairly oval shaped. It needs to be fairly well centered towards the bottom of the gear, towards the inside of the gear. Um, whenever this vehicle is used, uh, there's going to be a lot of torque applied. <clears throat> and this pattern will actually move a little bit to the outside as it's used under pressure. You can pattern the gear, run it, bring it back into your shop after it's been run, look at the actual wear pattern, it's gonna be different than what your pattern was during setup. On the coast side, it's usually gonna be a little bit smaller and it's gonna be more towards the inside third of the gear. It should never be higher than your drive side. That's the number one rule. <clears throat> If your coast side is higher than your drive side, uh, you have a pinion depth issue. On the Ford 9 inch, when you look at the drive side, if this pattern is very, very low, the pinion depth shim needs to be thicker. The gear itself needs to be further away from the center line of the ring gear. If it's on the outside of the gear, if it's actually lapping off of the gear, your, the pinion is way too far out. And the instructions that come with your gear will tell you this, uh, but that's a, that's a very simple way of putting it. If it's too far out, it needs to go in. If it's too far in, it needs to go out. And we we're talking about the depth of the pinion itself. If it needs to go out, you have to add pinion shim. If it needs to go in, you have to take it away. This pattern right here, it's not a bad pattern. Um, it's a little bit sharp on the inside, uh, which generally means um, that this pinion could go away from center line a little bit. Uh, the pinion depth is in a little bit too much. It could go out a little bit. Uh, by reading this pattern, it is fairly rounded off. There's a little bit of a taper here. Uh, and when I say a little bit, um, I would probably move this shim maybe two thousandths and call it good. Uh, I'll obviously pattern it again to look at it. Uh, you'll see a slight difference, but this is really close. It should be because this gear had already been set up. Really, the only thing I did was I moved a little bit of backlash out of it. So uh, my depth is probably uh, because I moved the, the backlash. So that's what I'm going to do now. We're going to go ahead and wrap this up now. Uh, the last thing that we have to do, um, we're going to lock the spanners. You have a spanner lock a little tab that bolts into the carrier cap. We'll put that on both sides. You have your backlash and your preload set with those spanners so you don't want them going anywhere. And they are little 3 8 sometimes 5 16 bolts depending on the manufacturer. You don't want to put a ton of torque on them. Uh, we generally see them down by hand. Um, if you want to put a number on it, uh, it's going to be about 25 foot pounds maximum. Again, they're very small fasteners, and you only have about five threads of the bolt that's in the cap. Hmm. 
Past that, the only other thing I do is I do give them a little tap sometimes if you're sticking out. And that is, in a nutshell, uh, how to change out a carrier group and reset the pattern on the 49 inch.